What's going on guys? It's Declaration and today we're going to do a little bit of a different video. So a few people have asked um, kind of like how much have I spent so far on this build and I've been actually keeping pretty meticulous records on expenditures. One to kind of see where I am with my budget of what I kind of expected and also two for tax purposes. So when you register one of these vehicles um, you need to show all your receipts on how much taxes, especially, uh, I know for Virginia, I think a lot of states are very similar um, because you have to pay um, tax on the whole total cost of the vehicle. So the more receipts you have, the more tax you can show that you've already paid on the vehicle, which makes your total tax load a little bit lower. And which, hey, I don't like paying taxes, so. If I could pay less, that I'm totally game for it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go through. I print out my last little Excel sheet, and we're gonna go through. And I'm gonna try and have this just pulled up on the screen so you guys can see it as well. And I apologize for the random construction noises. Um, yeah, they're remodeling next door. Actually, I'm gonna find a better place to go. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, they're doing remodeling next door, so decided to bring this video inside. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do kind of a total cost breakdown of where I'm at right now. I'm gonna go big ticket items I'm gonna uh, talk about and kind of briefly run through some of the smaller ticket items. And the peanut gallery is here. Say hi to my puppies. Hey, Evie. Albie, come here. Albie, come here. Come say hi. You wanna say hi to people? No, just Evie wants to say hi. All right, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so I'll just run over the big ticket items and then I'm gonna have the smaller items. I'm just gonna kind of gloss over them and then we'll talk about the uh, total build costs that I'm into right now. Um, so the base kit for the um, Factory 5 hot rod truck is $19,990. $19, so that was just the basic kit. Um, I added for $500 to powder coat the frame um, $400 for the tilt steering wheel. That's a necessity, especially if you're tall. Um, highly recommend it. Um, I spent $1,350 for the AC components um, because I really want to drive this um, all year round. Um, if there's no snow on the ground, obviously. Um, but for the most part, I want to be able to drive this more often than not. Um, part of the reason why I decided to build this over the Cobra because I really like the Cobras as well but I wanted the capability if I'm gonna have something take up a garage space um, I need to have more utilization outside of just the summertime and some fall and some spring like I wanted this to be able to be driven pretty much anytime I want to except for in snow I'm not gonna I'm not crazy um, but yeah um, and then I spent $1,450 on the engine cover kit, which um, I actually ended up just selling this past weekend. Um, thank you, Tyler. I know you're uh, here subscribe and watch my video, so shout out to you. Um, appreciate it. It was a pleasure meeting you. Um, but yeah, and then when I ordered my kit, Factory 5 had a $2,020 um, discount. It was, um, I ordered it beginning of January. So I guess their 2020 special, $2,020, um, they had a discount on it. So my total kit purchase price was $21,669. So that's what I paid for the kit just to get it delivered to me. All right, so next, um, I have these sections broken down um, into like major system. So the next one is the engine. Now this is... Uh, a lot of money went here. So, 
for the engine, I bought an LQ4. So it was a 2004 Shelby LQ4 that was in a 2500 um, Silverado. Um, I got the complete engine. It was complete wiring harness, um, intake manifold with an old oil pan. It was a complete pullout. The harness wasn't chopped up or anything like that. Um, and I paid $1,900 for that delivered. So they delivered it to my house for $1,900. Um, then for the um, for the build of the engine, um, I did the um, rockers with the trunnion upgrade, LS7 style lifters. Um, I had to get a LS throttle um, cable bracket. And I have all these prices on the screen, so I don't have to go through and just list a hundred prices because it's a little insane. Um, so I had to do a F body harmonic balancer with my um, accessory drive kit, um, auto belt tensioner that was part of the requirement. Um, so the trans control with that, that's my entire Phytech system. Um, so that was the um, intake manifold, fuel injectors, fuel rails, um, thought, uh, 102 millimeter throttle body, um, the ECU, the wiring harness, and the trans control harness, and the um, wideband O2 sensors because it also um, auto tunes, and the fuel pump, fuel line. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So it was a pretty inclusive uh, system. I was on the fence between Holly and Fitech, and that's just kind of where um, I kind of landed. So that's where that is. Um, so the knock sensors, it didn't have a knock sensor um, harness, and I had to get new knock sensors as well. Um, engine dipstick. Um, oil pump, LS4 corner steam um, vent system, Holly oil pan because of how low the truck is um, and uh, the engine I got was out of a pickup truck so it had a really deep oil pan so that that was a, a necessity. Um, cylinder head alignment dials, um, machine work so um, the bottom end of the the engine I took to a machine shop, uh, Tyson's Automotive Machine. If you guys are in the Sterling, Virginia area or just the Northern Virginia area, highly recommend his work. He did a phenomenal job, very communicative. Um, and like his shop is like, you see that old style machinery and stuff like that. And you can tell like he's just been doing this for decades and he did a phenomenal job. And I heard that he's really good in the BMW community as well, the guy I bought the BMW from almost all the BMW guys take their engine work to him as well. So the guy is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, um, I had to get the little bolts for the IAC and the uh, TPS um, sensor. Serpentine belt, um, there's a funny story about four, that's four belt in. Um, I, obviously I returned the ones that didn't work. Uh, thermostats, spark plugs, yeah, typical stuff, um, all the sensors and all that type of stuff for this type of engine. Um, but after the forge pistons, forge, rod, um, forge rods, head porting, all the crazy go fast stuff that I did to the um, car and the cam, where's that at? Uh, yeah, camshaft and a valve spring kit. So yeah, it added up. Um, so my total engine cost I'm into is $11,762.08. And you'll see on the spreadsheet that I broke it down how much I paid subtotal and then with taxes. And that just makes it easy for me um, at the end of the day when I have to go register this. So... Now we're going to get to the transmission. So... I got a Performaville Stage 2 transmission. Um, they say it's rated to about 700 horsepower. And when I was talking with them, um, there's a few, I can't remember, I think it's like Performaville. Um, 
I can't remember the other two. Um, there's three major companies that I've seen uh, in my research for an automatic 4L60, like for the 4L60. Um, they are um, the top three that I've seen and everyone had glowing reviews for all of them. The reason why I went with Performa Build is because they offered a two year warranty and I knew I was gonna be spending a decent part of the first year actually building the car. So the having the comfort of having a warranty after I initially built the car was kind of a cool feeling. So that's why I chose them. I went to their state shoe and when I talked to them, they said it handled about 700 horsepower and that's designed for like a 4,000 pound car. This car only weighs about 26, 27 at the most, fully built. So it will handle more. They wouldn't give me obviously a, a exact power number, but it'll definitely handle more power because of how light the car is. Um, so I was definitely pleased with that. And I was like, all right, so I went with that. So that was about $2,400. Um, I had to get um, a 3500 stall torque converter. That's what's recommended by Factory 5 because of how light these vehicles are. Um, you have to have a pretty high stall torque converter. Otherwise, they'll end up pushing through their brakes. Um, so I got um, a billet torque converter that was $1,125. Um, then I got the transmission dipstick and the low, uh, low car shifter and you'll see the TCI um, Street Fighter shifter um, and it says wrong part um, with this this car you have to pay attention if you're going to run automatic you need a shifter that actually bolts to the transmission itself not bolting to a transmission tunnel because the transmission tunnel that comes with these are fiberglass so you can't that's not a sturdy surface to bolt the shifter on so you need to make sure you get one that bolts to the transmission. So I ordered that. I ended up selling it for a $90 loss to someone else. So yeah, it wasn't that bad. Um, and then the transmission oil cooler was like 40 bucks. So not bad. So total on then for the transmission um, and all the ancillary parts were $4,226.59. Um, so the rear end, my rear end's out of a um, 2011 Ford Mustang GT. Um, I specifically picked this one out. It's kind of an oddball gear ratio. I actually ended up going with 315 gears. Um, kind of the reasoning behind it, I was trying to balance this car out on acceleration and highway performance because I really do want to drive this car a lot. And I was thinking about um, with the higher gear ratios and stuff like that, um, your engine's working really hard at um, highway speeds. So I kind of did all the calculations and I'll probably be running about 1800 RPM at about 75 miles an hour. I was like, that's cherry. The engine's barely working, cruising, but how light the car is, it's still gonna accelerate like a bat out of hell anyways. And maybe it'll take some of the sketchiness off of the uh, initial launch of the vehicle. Alright, so I'm going to talk about lines and fittings now. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, some of the hot, uh, hot spots, um, well, high points are the fuel surge tanks. So my swirl pot that, for my fuel system, that was $300. Um, that's also Phytech. Um, and that has a um, 340 uh, liter per hour um, fuel pump in that one. And then I got my Moshe's, Motion Raceworks oil catch can, which um, that thing is amazing because it also, um, it, instead of my oil fill cap, I have a oil fill cap with a 12 AN um, fitting on it. And that vents straight into there. And I just have the vent ports on each valve cover going um, connect it so my crankcase ventilation all goes through the oil fill cap um, yeah and that's about it so just in lines and fittings and this is one of the surprising numbers for me um, I did not expect this to be this but if you want to run like AN lines you want to run your own specific lines for everything this stuff creeps up and adds up real quick so I'm 
$1,380.47 into lines and fittings alone. Um, now, the, um, the kit does come with hard fuel lines, but I wasn't really happy with how small they are. Yeah, it pushes up the pressure, but I also need to have um, volume as well because of the, um, the horsepower demands of not necessarily what the engine is at now, but what I've kind of planned the engine to grow to eventually if I get bored. Um, I'm always thinking two, three cars ahead and two or three stages of the car, of each car ahead before you guys even see it. So I, I wanted to run my own fuel line um, to be able to handle that. Um, all right, cool. Um, I wanna talk about wheels and tires. So the wheels I got are at uh, AOD hand wheels. I don't know how to pronounce that, um, but they ran me $611. Um, the tires I got were Continent, uh, Continental Sport Contacts. Um, I have Con Continental Extreme Contacts, um, the all season ones on my SHO, and they handle beautifully. They hook up every time, no matter hot, rain, sleet, snow. The car just dead hooks anytime I want to. And um, very impressed by it. So I got their summer versions for this car. Um, to mount and balance the wheels is $108 and lug nuts were 24 bucks. So, um, oh yeah, the tires are $1,125. So total into the wheels, I'm $1,974.05. That's about average for wheels. That one didn't surprise me. Um, here goes one that um, kind of gets overlooked when you're planning for your build. Um, and this is engine oil. Uh, I mean, just fluids in general. Fluids, lubricants, sealants, like the stuff adds up. It wasn't astronomical. But just um, engine oil, brake in oil, oil filters, brake fluids, all that type of stuff. It, I'm just shy of 800 bucks into just fluids and sealants and paint. Um, and then power um, for electrical. Um, there's still more to add to this. I still have a few more receipts to go in, but this is just a good rough estimate. This is kind of like where we're at right now. Um, so power and ground distribution blocks, um, 47 bucks, and the Odyssey battery. So when you're looking at the battery space that's provided in this truck, it's actually a pretty small space. So for the truck, I think they recommend the Odyssey PC925. So that battery is actually perfectly sized to fit in that really small space of what they give you for the, for the truck. So just keep that in mind. Um, you might have to just cough up for that battery. And it provides plenty of power to crank over the LS. So I figured it's fine. So in the electrical stuff, I'm $222 in. And so this one is an entire extra thing. This is just kind of, um, what I chose to do because the factory five was provided with front brakes, but I decided to kind of upgrade them. Um, and then um, the rear brakes came with the rear end, but they were pretty shoddy. So I ended up um, doing that again myself, um, just upgrading them as well. Um, I spent $187 on front and rear rotors and pads. Um, the rotors are just the, um, they're, they're drilled and slotted, um, and uh, the pads are the carbon ceramic pads. Um, I have an actual very similar combination on my show as well. Um, the show has been a good test bed for some of these parts that see how they work and everything. Um, but the carbon ceramic pads with those rotors, um, they surprisingly work really, really well considering how cheap they were. Um, I can actually lock up all four wheels on the show if I slam on the brakes before ABS can even kicks in. It, it, it engages very quickly. Um, and it 
but they, they do need a little bit of heat in them before they really, really bite. And I think that's the whole carbon ceramic pad type of deal. Um, but once it gets heat in it, it, it bites really nicely. So that's what I was like, yeah, that'll probably work for this build. Um, all right, so now that's everything I have documented in the receipts. There's probably a few hundred dollars that I have in, in receipts I need to go through and add back in. Um, but that's kind of like roughly where we're at right now. But now I have a um, total tally of what we're at right now. Um, ironically, I didn't write that down even though I had everything else documented. So, um, but in total, I'm $42,615.89 into this build. So, yeah. A lot of the estimates you see on the forums and everything, you see... 35 to as much as sixty thousand dollars to build any one of factory five's vehicles um and i'll say that's pretty fair um there are things that i definitely went high into the right on could i've built this for cheaper oh yeah totally um but there's things that i wanted to have a certain way and that's the way i did it um but yeah so I would say this is about an average build so far in to how much I spent into it. So yeah, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see more videos like this, it's just me kind of talking to you guys, explaining my thought process and what I'm doing, comment down below, let me know. Um, this is kind of fun. Um, a lot of you guys don't really get to see or hear my thought process. so. I think it's kind of cool to share that with you guys sometimes. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. Um, and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And a lot of you guys that watch my videos aren't even subscribed, so it helps me out, helps push these videos out to more people. And um, it's good to hear when I do interact with some of the subscribers, uh, some of you guys, um, my videos are helping you. And that means a lot to me um, because um, when I went to go build this truck, I I was tr grasping at straws trying to find someone to guide me or I don't say guide me, but someone that I can see what they're going through and kind of see how they tackle certain problems. And there's a lot for the Cobras. There's a ton of people that built the Cobras and there's a ton of content that you can see and you can see how they build certain things. Um, the Hot Rods, there's a few people out there. I'm gonna give a shout out to Street Ride Jim. Um, I really do appreciate his content and like how thorough he is, the way he films. And I try to emulate some of that thoroughness with the way I film. Um, but yeah, he was a major help in when I was trying to figure out and certain problems I was expecting to run into and how to overcome them. Um, other than that, there's really not my people for the truck. So I decided that I was going to create that content for the truck but yeah thank you guys again um don't forget like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell um have a good one